Hello, everybody, and welcome to our after church tea time. Apologies for the late start. I'm having a special technology day, so there's some healing in that as well. But thank you for joining us. Thank you to the team for being here today. I'm Granville Campbell. I'd like the team to introduce themselves, and then we're going to share with you our learnings and our journey relating to the sermon today by Priscilla and Michaela on cultivating healthy relationships. Yeah, maybe I can start. I'm Carmen. I'm happy to be here. And I'm just going to give away uh, straight away shortly my biggest takeaway from today's sermon. And it's like um, that everything and every relationship and everything in your reality is meant to give back to you like um, more than than you give kind of like, right? You are, you are meant to overflow. Cool beans. Kelly, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yes. Hi, I'm Kelly. And uh, yes, I, I love this sermon. I thought it brought um, just so much clarity because I feel like, um, you know, like even like, of course, everything is a relationship with ourselves and with God, like that's primary, but even looking um, at everything and everyone has a specific purpose in your life and how that can bring you closer to yourself and closer to God, like um, really looking at how, like say our finances, for instance, like everything that we're given has a very specific purpose um, I'd never really considered it like quite in that way and that if we're not using it in a very divine way that that's that can really show how we're leaking our energy away and result in lack and um, kind of poverty consciousness and not and so I, I think having awareness around these places where we're giving and not receiving um is is critical because um yeah it's just critical to have that awareness so you, that you can heal it and create a better relationship because otherwise it just stays uh, unresolved which never feels good so yeah i agree with both of you i think something that stood out for me and you know it's not something new but it is it's good to be reminded because the awareness does help us to engage in our healing a lot more and is you know just the the pra very practical example that Jose shared from one of our live classes where Jeff was talking about waking up with a certain amount of energy in a given day and how that energy is expended and or expensed. And, you know, just putting it in real rand, well, real dollar terms just makes sense because then you just realize, well, you know, if you have $50, you can't spend more than the $50 without getting, you know, you're getting into a deficit if you spend more than the $50. And so the same thing applying to our energy just makes perfect sense that your energy as you have that much energy at any, at any given time. And at any given time, that energy is there to serve a purpose. And so if the purpose for that energy is not being served, it's literally being wasted or it's being put into a place that, it's, that is inappropriate for that expense of energy. And I feel like that was the, 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 like that was the primary lesson for me was where the energy feels like it's being used incorrectly. And I just, you know, I find that a lot of the time I do feel a little bit drained or a little bit stuck. And it, you know, it just makes sense that I'm using energy in the wrong places. And so it's, it's a reminder to be very deliberate about how I use my energy and also to be deliberate about where I choose to stop using my energy because everything does not require my energy. Yeah, I just like that they also brought up the, um, as you already shared, uh, the relation between 
like your finances and uh, energy management, like it will reflect back in your finances, how you manage your own energy. And I feel for me, it was like a huge update just now having this new job in a way. It's like, you know, I get paid like every two weeks and usually like specifically here in Germany, it's not that usual to have that. It's more like you get paid in the end of the month, you get everything right all at once. But having it like split it up in like every two weeks you get a new payment is for me also like, you know, um, kind of like a big improvement, to be honest, because it feels like um, it's giving to me as well. And I'm not kind of like waiting for my payment on the end of the month, but it feels good to have that. And I remember in one of my, our um, health and wellness coaching sessions, um, uh, Chrissy shared with me that, you know, looking, I think it was in a group, but yeah, uh, looking at your your bank account every day and getting clear on how much money you have there is also, you know, in relation to how you how you kind of feel, because when you feel, of, of course, your energy is not coming from the money you have in your bank account, but it should give back to you, right? It should be in balance. And I cultivated this as well. I may be not doing that every day because I know like what I spent and when the money is going off my bank account. So I would basically look at the same numbers or something when not, nothing is coming in or out. But if it's good to have that awareness, if it's good to know, to be clear on that, and um, that gives to me. And yes, I definitely see also when uh, Manuela shared like her experience with money in the introduction as like, oh yeah, I relate to that as like, Whenever I don't feel so energized or I'm not really giving and receiving and being in balance there, I feel also stuck with my finances. It's like a direct reflection. And just having that awareness brought up today again was like, oh, yeah, that's that's super powerful to know. Right. Um, yeah, I thought that was a what was a great awareness again and just a good reminder to to see the relationship there. No, I love that. Um, I'm currently working through learning spreadsheets and I just was working through my taxes and I run a business. So um, it just gets very complex with the ins and outs. And I've just like, just re like this weekend figured out like a new system for aligning everything. And I'm like, and I just realized, why am I not doing this like weekly and monthly? Why am I waiting till like tax season to do this? So like part of that was like, oh, you know, I really want to get clear with this now. So I started, like I started with January this year. So I can really start to be very clear. Um, and I think something that's really powerful too, is I hadn't really considered that like how the relationships within my business and my employees and how that all plays a part into my finances. I've just gotten clarity on some of these things because if you let things sit and muster, it just, it's like a cloud. And so I'm just starting to get clear, um, but I always, I always had this, um, like if I felt my feelings and I stated what I wanted in my childhood, I was, I was always shut down. So I just learned to not say anything and suppress everything. So like, <laughs> so I don't have those same kind of relationships, but, um, but there's still definitely some healing to be done. And I just got this realization that the relationships like really affect the finances, because if I'm not honoring the divinity within those relationships, then why would God help me? create something that's not totally divine. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's no, yeah, nice definitely. It, yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a powerful re realization, right? So, and I, I love that you brought us back to our the, the core of our topic today, which is around relationships and understanding that everything is a relationship and i think and i think that's kind of the, that's been my biggest learning since joining tfaz and since following the teachings of jefferson shalia is that everything is a relationship and i never actually put it in that perspective i, 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 I probably 
miss that perspective quite a bit, but it literally is just that. How I relate to myself, how I relate to the time in the day, how I relate to other people, how I relate to my finances, how I relate to my food journey and cooking and not living on takeaways and you know even just the the relationship with exercise and something that you know it, it struck me very interesting that one of the one of the people in the community actually put a post where the relationship with exercise came up and it's just you know all of those things that tell you that the core of it is what we've been on the journey to heal. Our ascension is literally healing our core relationship with God and our relationship with ourselves and everything else is going to flow from that. And this past week, I had a session with my coach, Lisi, and we, you know, we just went into the space where I was actually very similar to what you shared, Kelly, in being shut down. And so I learned not to trust my heart and not to trust my voice and not to trust myself. And just that core realization that my relationship with myself was based, was very much a shaky thing, even though I had been working on building, rebuilding that relationship. It was, it was shaky. And it was literally the core of it is trusting myself, trusting my heart and my intuition and trusting that I'm making the right choice and decision at this point. And I will make an, I may make a new choice or a new decision at a further point down the road if I have more information, if the desire changes. But the core of it is trusting what exists right now. I like that you shared that. Thank you for sharing. It's actually funny that you both shared that. Just yesterday, I had a session where uh, we were healing through, um, like I was shutting myself down as well, or where I felt like I'm not allowed to feel my feelings unless someone tells me to. It's like uh, having, you know, being given like the confirmation that it's okay to feel anything. And that resulted in me having sometimes these volcano eruptions of emotions where like uh, sadness would overcome me a lot or like uh, any feeling basically even like happiness or whatever it got it got much better since I'm in the journey uh, since I'm on this journey but when I was a child it was usually like I would cry for hours and I wouldn't be able to come out of this because I would not really be in touch with my feelings for weeks and days and when something happened it just was just the drop that would overflow everything like a little trigger or something and then I would having a meltdown and um yeah like releasing that and releasing where this is coming from where I whenever felt really safe to to express my feelings but allowing that for myself it's like having also a new a new layer and a very much more healthy relationship with myself. Like, you know, I don't have to wait for things to be kind of like intense until I feel them or for someone to tell me or even my coach for me to tell me it's okay, you know, to feel whatever you are feeling right now, even when I'm not clear what it is, what I'm feeling, but giving myself the permission here because this is where it starts, right? And um, yeah, for me, that was definitely a big awareness. And when I woke up this morning, I was like, well, I feel so much more energy in my life right now. I feel really, really good. I just went to the gym, put on more weight on every of my exercises. I was like, well, I'm doing really amazing right now. I feel really good. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's definitely a big improvement in my life. I'm really happy for that. Um, yeah, I just thought that's funny that you guys shared that. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it, very cool because I, I think what's something that you shared that also was a, it was a big learning curve for me. I realized that I was actually, in order to pay attention to myself, there was a place where I had to actually throw a little bit of a tantrum so that I got my own attention. And I was like, oh Lord, where did I learn that from? And it was just, the, the, you know, that place of, 
I because I grew up in a house where people would where we were told kids should be seen and not heard. And so I was internally throwing a tantrum to hear myself. And I was like, oh Lord, that's like that's quite hectic to realize. But once you realize it, it's so much more peaceful because you realize that you don't have to do that. It's not necessary. And that is the peaceful part for me. It's just like, oh, I can breathe and I can just actually truly pay attention to myself. I love that. I just got this uh, new awareness that like God doesn't negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you 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 uh you know it, it, it's really I think about just really learning a left lesson and once you have the awareness of truly following through and then facing like all of the fears and upsets and doubts of where where you feel like if you speak your mind you might lose love or you might um you know I, I'm working through this in a family relationship right now where I wasn't allowed to feel, and now as an adult, especially, I'm like inviting all of my feelings. I'm claiming my feelings, telling myself that my feelings really matter to me. And so, and I'm still having like a little bit of deflecting in some of my family relationships. And I'm just like, it's it's challenging because these people have always been close to me, but I have to set like a really high standard because my feelings are not negotiable. And I find too, especially through coaching, is that I think sometimes the like the we've got our feelings of fear and doubt and worry. And those are the ones that we want to bring love to and heal through. And because God is not limited. So we don't need to um, give energy to ego and to fear but really go into that true like divine alignment. And the only way we can do that is through our feelings. And so like I'm learning just to have this like non-negotiable, like I really matter, my, my feelings really matter. And I'm still kind of playing with it throughout the day. And still, you know, there's places I'm still numb and still avoiding and still putting myself last in areas of my life. but it's a, you know, it's a process of like having the awareness. And but then once you have the awareness, like, it's really important to go and heal the feelings underneath that, that keep me from speaking my truth and saying, no, I won't negotiate. This is what my school is about. And there's no, not, there's no negotiation. Um, I'm kind of working through that right now. But <laughs> so and that's awesome because it's it was also something that came through in the sermon was just the on, being honest with yourself and i feel like that that's probably one of the more empowering lessons that we experience on our twin flame journey and on our ascension journey is literally getting to the truth and being authentic and honest with yourself. And sometimes your authenticity is going to make ensure that things fall away because there, is, there will be people and things that misalign with your authenticity. And it doesn't make it bad that some things do fall away. And so, you know, I, I have to be careful that it's not trauma doing that. It's literally my truth doing that. But often I, I you know, I've just, I, I have to sit more in the attention space, in the, in the present space. And just like what you were saying, Kelly, that deflection thing, like not, not deflecting it. Yes, you project the upset so that you can change the upset back to heal it, you know, in part in through the mirror exercise. But it's just like, don't avoid yourself. Don't be afraid of looking truly at yourself. Don't be afraid of connecting truly with yourself. So what you were speaking to Carmen that like, you know, I, I have to accept that all of these things are there. Doesn't matter what it is. I, I I accept that I can feel my feelings. I accept that it's okay, that I can give myself permission. And all of those things, 
we have been taught over and over again through our learnings in T fairs, in our classes, we're in, in following the classes, in our coaching sessions, is that's how you get back to your truth. You get back to your core, and that's really your relationship. And one of the most profound things that ever stood out to me was that peace is your natural state of being. And I was like, it took me a long time to grapple with that because, you know, you, you don't actually realize how much noise you have inside yourself until you start to heal and you start to experience those moments of peace. Yeah, true. Beautiful. Yeah, um, something that came up for me when you guys were sharing is that just what they said in the sermon again, I know we've been saying this already, but you already only have one relationship with everything. And Grenville, you already shared that in the beginning. It's like, uh, it's not only a relationship with other people, with other humans, but you're also having a relationship, I don't know, with this laptop right now or, you know, with your environment, with your room. And um, something that came up for me is that you know, every time, sometimes my, my room look, looks a little messy and I'm like, wow, but I'm not feeling like tidying up because there is some, some, some inner process involved with that. Like usually before starting the journey, I was like a kind of like a control and clean freak. Like I had to clean everything. Otherwise I wouldn't have a clean mind. And yes, there is a relationship to it. But right now I'm feeling sometimes when there is a mess, it's like, I feel I need to resolve something within myself in order to feel that energy, to have that energy, to clean the mess on the outside, basically. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of like getting in the flow so you, it doesn't have to come to a big mess or something. I'm just talking, for example, about my dishes. It's like, oh, that's a thing, you know. <laughs> I'm really having that routine lately. Yeah, right? The fucking dishes. I really, you know, like... <laughs> that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean oh my god it's like it's like a running gig for me every time i tell daniel like i have to do the fucking dishes today <laughs> but you know i'm learning to enjoy it and also having that um kind of like loving my my future self so when i wake up in the morning and i go to the kitchen i'm not like oh they're piling up again but i'm like oh i'm so glad you know i I moved through that resistance and just did it and listening what uh, listening to a Tifa's class or listening to music or anything that feels good or having a video call with him, like with Daniel is like, uh, yeah, a big improvement. And so this is where I feel supported in my environment and supported in feeling my feelings. And yeah, I, I definitely see and feel more and more like the connection of everything, like how much every detail matters. And just recently, I've been also moving through um, like my Facebook friends list and my Instagram friends list, like the people I follow and I've been really feeling into, do I really want to follow this person or was I just following them because, you know, they followed me or something. It's like, nah, that doesn't feel good, you know? And something I've been moving through is like even letting go of old friends, like from, from high school or something, um, but feeling bad about it because I was like, what if, at some point, you know, I regret having, uh, that I let them go, but that doesn't make sense because is there a relationship right now? And is there, you know, does, is there a purpose? And it felt really good to to clean this up. And the same with clothes. It's like, I, I realized like every two or three months I have to declutter everything because, you know, on this journey, we are changing so much and so fast and sometimes all these things that gave me joy a few months ago are not giving me joy any longer. And so letting go of them feels really good because it's everything is in a constant flow. And that gives me life force as well. And that allows me to receive um, new and better things. And something I learned from Marie Kondo, I thought that was interesting, is that when you have maybe trouble of letting go things and even people... But she was specifically talking about clothes. Sometimes people feel bad about letting go of old clothes, even though they think they are beautiful, but they're not giving them joy any longer, right? It's like what you can do, a good practice you can do is just thank the clothes or this person for being in your life, but thank them that they have served their purpose and see like, yeah, you had your purpose, but you know, thank you for being or that you have been in my life, but I'm uh, able to let you go now. And I was like, wow, no, that, that was something... 
uh, some cool uh, mind shift there to to declutter even faster and with like uh, being in that relaxed and relieved state. I love I love that. I love that you brought up like thanking yourself for that. Something that like right away sp sparked in in my heart was the uh, was forgiveness. That's something that I've really been working through lately. I went in and um, listened to the Friday Live in the TFU uh, featured section just recently. I've just been going through different things to continue learning and growing. And um, they talk about forgiveness. And that was something I was really grounding in. And I think that um, it's important to forgive others. But ultimately, when you're doing the mirror exercise, you can go in and you for can forgive yourself. Like, even these childhood patterns that like maybe our families are showing us, I think like when you can mirror it and really forgive yourself. And like, I just recently um, realized that some of these patterns were like before I was three. So like I came into this world with some of these patterns. And so I think sometimes, um, sometimes it's really easy to um, kind of blame ourselves and that sort of thing. But the truth is that we're truly innocent and we can just really learn to forgive ourselves. So that's something I'm noticing a lot recently. It's like, well, whatever I'm struggling to actually work through, I can just, I can just bring forgiveness. I can just allow that to permeate my life. And then that just lets everything lighten and gives me that, um, you know, permission to feel even more because if we have feelings underneath that of guilt or shame, like we're not going to want to feel those things <laughs> and we're not going to be able to heal them if we can't feel them. So I think forgiveness uh, really helps me create the safety to go deeper in my healing, which helps me just heal a deeper relationship with myself um, and with God, because ultimately, right, these blocks we have with ourselves also, um, you know, like we can deflect them to God, but it's really God's just showing us what we're choosing, even at three. <laughs> so, yeah. I like that. And I, I think you've touched on something very important in forgiveness, because that for me has been one of the, the almost primary stuck points is the resentment that's attached to unforgiveness. And so it was a lot of a lot of healing around forgiveness and also releasing resentment because sometimes we forgive, but in order to completely forgive and free ourselves, because technically forgiveness is never really for the other person. It's always for us. And so, you know, just the, the, the residual of that resentment is something that I've learned I also have to clean up as part of my healing into forgiveness. Because I tend to remember things quite a bit. And in remembering it, there is there tends to be a little bit of an emotional charge left. So just healing through the, the, the forgiveness past the resentment allows me to relax. And Carmen, I think it speaks to something that you shared around clutter, because I find that the minute I truly feel at peace, like the, I've healed that thing quite a bit, then I am driven to unclutter my space. It's literally like I've let go of the emotional and spiritual clutter, and then I can see the, uh, the, the misalignment of things in my physical space. And it doesn't take energy then to get rid of that clutter because it just feels out of alignment, so it just has to go. You know, so and and that's that's been one of the profound lessons that I've learned is that the deeper the healing, the the the, the, the almost the immediate uncluttering of the physical space happens. It's just like it's so con interconnected. Like I don't it, I don't even realize that I'm cleaning up the space sometimes. But I just know like I I've healed something and I look at something and it's like nah, it needs to go. 
And I've, <laughs> I've become so unattached that the, when the no comes, I'm like, okay, we, we're done now. Let's not do this. And so it just makes life so much more <laughs> peaceful because I don't have to actually put energy into it. The energy is already there to do it. You got me wanting to clean my my space and re do my whole furniture I'm like looking at all right now I'm like yes I want to redo my whole space and that's the thing though right you <laughs> just see know. the misalignment and you just know I'm gonna <laughs> do something about this now <laughs> okay next step <laughs> I love it yeah feeling also very eager to get even more cleaner here yeah <laughs> It's it's very uncanny though, right? And I I don't you know I I actually only realize it after a few months of being on the healing journey and really focusing on my coaching, well, attending coaching, and it was just it was just so uncanny that like the energy was just there. It it wasn't even that I had to focus on it, and then I realized I'd always in the background had this feeling of it certain things don't belong but the minute I healed and came back to center and grounded into myself everything else in around me had to feel more balanced and that's something that came through in the sermon is that Michaela and Jose shared it's just this, this returning to balance and you find that you will return to balance and you'll start to give in the places where you need to give but also also to give in the place in give appropriately in other places so not giving to somebody's ego and their ego games but giving them the love that they're truly asking for and i feel like jeff and shalia have, have have literally reflected that for us quite a bit and really well in that they give the love that people are asking for and sometimes that love is not necessarily what everybody else would would or may have thought it is but when you actually feel into it you realize how appropriate it is and I feel that has been a, quite a big learning for me is when it feels right. And I'm not giving from the place of meeting them in meeting people in their ego game. And myself as well, because, you know, you, you, you kind of still have to be clear that you're also not meeting yourself in your ego thing. In your ego game, you kind of you, you're really, truly allowing your consciousness to purify itself and giving to yourself in the right way for that part of you because we also need to remember that we are actually at the core healing all of that so that we can have those healthy relationships yeah and i think too, like you know it's healed when it's easy if it feels hard there's work to do so um that's that's what i struggle with is i want to push through and have this like pressure energy no just if you just push through a little bit more it'll feel better and you'll have the abundance but that's like the old paradigm where we just like trying to knock out walls with sheer force um but that you know like the term godspeed like it'll just naturally appear and show up when you like let go and allow and and work through the feelings inside that actually keep you stuck because it's the feelings that keep us stuck. It's not actually like God doesn't keep us stuck. <laughs> so. True. I mean, cool. How, how are you both feeling? I'm feeling like we're getting close to conclusion. So yeah, any last thoughts from either of you that you'd like to share before we wrap up for today? Cool. Perfect. So thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining me for after tea time. Thank you, after church tea time. And thank you to the people that have followed us also for joining our, us in after church, after church tea time. And also please feel free to like and subscribe to our Church of Union YouTube channel where you'll find all our other content from previous sermons and live discussions in both our forums and in uh, well, in our Twin Flames Universe forum and also in our 
Church of Union YouTube channel, as well as in our Unionism Spiritual Discussion Group. And please feel free to join us again soon for another After Church Tea Time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.